afternoon, everybody. Rose here. So today I'm doing a verbal recap of the Chapter 3 Dee Dee and Natter files that were released on Sam's Bar Lounge last night. I won't be showing the video here because I watched it. It's 26 minutes long and there's a lot of disturbing things about that video and I don't want to trigger anyone by showing the video or playing the audio. So we're just gonna talk about it here. For those who are wondering what's in the video, I'm just gonna tell you what's in the video, and that way you can make a choice whether you want to go watch it or you don't. So, before that video was released, Sam's Bar Lounge put out an 11 second preview of what would be on chapter three. An 11 second clip was played of Dee Dee crying and begging Natter to stop whatever it was he was doing and him telling her to shut up. A lot of people listened to that audio. A lot of people very disturbed by that audio uh, saying, why didn't you send this to the cops, to the person who had the audio? Why just release it on YouTube? Uh, a lot of people were disturbed by that 11 second audio. And what's interesting is that the chapter three that did get released did not have that clip in it. Uh, I listened to the entire thing. You didn't hear the part where Dee Dee was begging and crying and now they're telling her to shut up. What you did see was the following. And let's see if I can keep the story straight. Okay, because it's not just Chantal that Natter and Dee Dee were talking about in this audio. There were two other people that got mentioned in this new video. So the new characters in this Chantal Natter Dee Dee situation are Shushu. Shushu is a close friend to Dee Dee, someone she's known for 15 years. And Shushu has a husband, someone named Nick. And Nick and Shushu have been married for many, many years since high school. There's also another person that's mentioned in the video, and his name is Mike. And Mike is a dom, and I guess that's also a friend of Dee Dee. But there was a situation, I believe, that happened before Nadler came into the picture. Shushu was married to her husband, and I guess, intimately speaking, those two were not being very passionate to each other. So Shushu made the decision to step out of the marriage and have a intimate occasion with this person, this dominant named Mike and Dee Dee. And this happened a few times. So she did that. And then after the fact, Nadra came into the picture. And Dee Dee told Natter about this, these occasions with this dominant named Mike. And in the video that was released, Natter is essentially throwing a temper tantrum because here this, here's this guy named Mike that has been intimate with his now girlfriend and this other woman. And that's something that Natter wants to do. He wants to have an occasion with two women. Maybe that's the reason why he was so passionate about trying to get Dee Dee and Chantal to have an occasion with him. He's the kind of person, he's the kind of guy that if somebody does something of a sexual nature with his girlfriend, then he's got to do it too. No matter what, he's got to do it. So Natter was basically pitching a fit saying that he's going to have sex with Shushu. In the video, Dee Dee tells him, Shushu doesn't want you. She has no desire for you. And you're not going to have sex with my friend. It's just not going to happen. And Natter is none too pleased to hear this. He, he wants to sleep with Shushu. I don't think it's because he desires Shushu. He just wants to, in his own messed up mind wants to even the scales. Hey, there's this dude, this other dom, that slept with my girl and another girl, so I have to do it too. 
Danny tells him no repeatedly. You're not going to sleep with my friend. Matter gets mad and tells her we're done. We're absolutely done. If I can't sleep with your friend, we're done. Yeah, he actually said that. Oh, we're, we're done because you're not letting me sleep with your friend. It gets worse, y'all. He tells Dee Dee in this recorded audio video that he's so angry about it all that he's actually going to go to Shushu's husband and let him know about this affair that happened, these, these occasions that happened. He said, yeah, I'm going to handle it. I'm going to get online tomorrow and I'm going to call the husband and let him know about what happened. And then we'll see if you're still friends with Shushu. So basically he was threatening to out the affair to the husband, which would then make Shushu angry and Shushu probably wouldn't want to talk to Didi anymore. Shushu stepping out on her husband. Yeah, that's rotten. Cheaters suck. They absolutely suck. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, but Natter is that person that if he knows some dirt on you, he's going to hold it over your head. And the sounds of that audio, that the tone that I got from it all was, you better tell your friend she's, she's going to sleep with me or else I'm going to destroy her marriage and her friendship with you, which I found to be stomach turning. Throughout the audio, throughout the video, Natter was just saying things and coming off with the attitude of, you know, there was a sense of entitlement. You know, like he feels entitled to sleep with any woman he wants, no matter what. And he didn't like being told no. He absolutely did not like it. So Dee Dee was saying a lot of things to Natter that were getting him increasingly angry. And during the last part of the video, he flicks a cigarette at her. And whoever she's talking to on the phone or whatnot, you know, like she says, yeah, he's flicked a cigarette at me. He just flicked a cigarette at me. Dee Dee repeatedly called him a coward. And then at one point he gets up and he slaps her. After that, she gets really, really quiet. And then I guess she's talking to somebody on the phone and, and telling that person, don't come here. Woman to woman, don't come here. It was a very disturbing video. Very disturbing. And that's why I'm not showing it here. If anybody wants to go watch the video on Sam's Bar and Lounge, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But I'm not showing it here. I, I've said before, I am not going to trigger anyone if I can help it. I know that Foodie's content it triggers people. I try to limit the amount of stuff that Chantal does here so that people aren't as triggered. But that video was horrible. Absolutely horrible. And you know what? I'm, I'm sitting here pissed off. I'm really pissed off. I was trying to do this video last night, but I was just so tired because... Crack Olympics was in full, full force. Natter and Chantal both going back and forth, back and forth. Chantal was up till 7 o'clock this morning doing videos and then dirty deleting. And I just couldn't keep up. I'm going to be, I'll be honest. I couldn't keep up, man. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. My eyes are closing. I can barely talk. I, I couldn't do this video last night. I tried. And I was just so exhausted. I'm like, nope. Nope, we're going to wait in the morning to where I have some more energy. But just this, it's the craziness is going back and forth. It's insane. When did these people sleep? I was also mad because the whole BDSM thing is part of the conversation now. The whole talk of doms and Natter over there calling himself a dom. I hate that. I can't even tell you how much I hate that. I hate it because what Natter, Didi, and Chantal are doing 
is not a true representation of the BDSM community, the lifestyle, or the people in it. Sorry, no, it's not. What it does represent are that section of people that try to get into the lifestyle, that want to be part of it, and they're doing it the wrong way. They're putting on titles, they're claiming things about themselves, and they have absolutely no interest in learning about the lifestyle, nor the people, nor the fact that everything that's done in the lifestyle is about consent. Straight up, consent. Consent is very important in that community. From start to finish, no matter who you are, dom or sub, it's about consent, it's about limits. It's about safe, consensual play. Whether you're a collared sub or not, everything is safe, everything is consensual. That's what makes it enjoyable for so many people. And you don't have to be part of that lifestyle to know that or to understand that. I'm absolutely pissed off that these three idiots, they're painting such a dark, disturbing picture of the lifestyle. Let it be known that, that Natter is a fake ass Dom. He is. He probably watched some adult movies and decided, oh, I'm a Dom now. No, you're not, dumbass. You're absolutely not. I bet if I sat down with him for five minutes, started to ask him just basic questions about different things about the life, he wouldn't be able to answer. He would not. And I say that as a sub switch. That means I can be dominant or submissive when I play. I haven't played in many years, but I'm a sub switch. And I know a lot about that lifestyle. You want to know why? Because I wanted to be informed. And I didn't want to come across anybody who's a fake who might cause me harm. And the way you protect yourself is through education. You learn about the lifestyle. You learn about the people in it. You learn about what is acceptable and what isn't. And so knowing that there are jerks like Natter in the lifestyle, calling themselves doms, and they're actually not, people who use the whole dom title to abuse other people, to do damage, and they try to justify it with a title. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass along some education. I'm going to do that. Yes, I am. For those who are interested, for those who don't know about the life and have questions, I just did some simple searches. Okay? Here's one. How to spot a fake dom. What are fake doms? Fake doms are people who are inexperienced and don't know what it is to it means to be a dominant. This is a real problem because many men who hear about DS dynamics are only interested in it for purely selfish reasons. True. In the time that I've been online and with what I do, I can't tell you how many fake doms I've come across. Guys who call themselves master try to get all up in my face, telling me they're going to dominate me. Oh, no, you're not. You're not going to dominate me. First of all, I don't know you. And I'm not interested. Okay? I'm not. Anybody that walks up with their chest all puffed out, trying to tell me they're a dom, from the jump, I know that you're a fake. I know you're all about that title. And you just want to be in control of a woman or women. And you want to do things to them. You have no, no knowledge of the life. And you have no interest in being a real dom. So why am I going to deal with you? Go away. Uh, as a result, they cause a lot of damage to people who don't know any better. True. Absolutely true. So here's what sucks about the fakes and the lifestyle. There are lots of people who are curious about the BDSM thing. People who are not people who are novices. People who are just starting out. They don't know what they're doing. Maybe they don't have a lot of knowledge. And there's a high chance 
they might run into somebody who's a fake dom, like Natter, somebody who might be abusive, someone who doesn't care about limits or consent. And all it takes to ruin somebody, to turn them away from the lifestyle, is one bad experience. And that one bad experience will make them not want to do anything with anybody ever again. That sucks. When you are curious about something and your first experience with it is going to be a bad experience and that just stops you from, you know, exploring different parts of yourself intimately that you could have explored all because you ran into a bad apple right away. You run into a bad apple, you think they're all bad apples and you just don't want to do anything. Sucks. Absolutely sucks. In my experience, most inexperienced men assume that they are dominance, while many experienced women prefer to be submissives. Yeah, you know what? There's no special school you have to go to to be a dom. But if you're a dom, since you are the dominant, you never stop learning. If you want to be a real dom, you're out there seeking out information on websites, wherever you can, learning as much as you can about the dominant role. You learn everything. You never stop learning. Same thing with being a sub. You're always learning things. You're always seeking out education. And for no other reason to protect yourself from those who are dishonest, dishonorable, sadistic, being informed helps to protect you from those who are not sincere and no care for you. These ignorant and inexperienced dominants find inexperienced submissives who don't understand consent and end up abusing them. Yep, that happens. You know, this is why education is so important. Those who are just doing the life or, or faking the funk for the sake of having a title. If you don't know what's going on, if you're not informed, there are those that might try to take advantage of the fact that you don't know much. They can just make up the rules as they go. A lot of people assume that it's the dominant who's in control. Not true. Believe it or not, it's the submissive who has the most control. Even if somebody has you tied up or whatnot, you're still in control. Because if you're with a real dom, they're not going to do anything to you that you don't want done. Remember what I said about limits? Yeah. You know how those are established? If you're someone and you're seeking out a dom, whether it's male or female, if you got the real one, you got one who's genuine and sincere, before they touch you, they will spend an endless amount of time talking to you, finding out as much about you as possible, finding out your background, what your relationships were like. Do you have any phobias? Do you have any fears? Do you have any health problems? Do you have anything that might trigger you? What are your favorite toys and why? What turns you off and why? I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of questions that they will ask you. They're not asking to be nosy. They're asking because they want to get an idea of who you are and what you like and what you don't like and how to make the play pleasurable. And they want to avoid anything that might cause some kind of bad psychological or emotional or physical reaction. But all that a dom's job is, is provide a safe, secure environment in which you, the sub, can just relax, surrender, and enjoy yourself. And you know that you're in no real danger. And if you've got a fake dom, natter, you're not going to take time to educate yourself. You're not going to care about your submissive. You're just going to do what you want to do. No matter what the outcome is. It's all about you. You got a real dom. It's not about the dom. It's not about their ego. 
a real dom, their focus is to help you surrender. And you know that you're in no danger. A fake dom, it's, it's all about them and their ego. See the difference? It's all about them feeding their ego and, and their need for power and control. Abuse is abs absolutely unacceptable and you will not stand for it. You're right. In the, in the lifestyle, abuse is absolutely unacceptable. I don't care what your title is. Abuse is unacceptable and should not be tolerated at all, period. How to spot a fake dom, warning signs and red flags. Uh, here's a big one. Doesn't know terminology or etiquette. Yeah. If you're a sub, you're allowed to ask questions. If somebody wants to be your dom, you should ask questions. As many as you want. You know? And you should. You should use that. Ask as many questions as you want about whatever you want at any time. And if that person is in front of you, they don't want to answer questions, don't play with them. Don't pursue anything with them. If you start asking questions like, well, what's your background? What's your training? Uh, have you had any subs before? What do you like to do? I mean, just anything you're curious about. If that dom doesn't want to answer your questions or they start to get irritated because you're asking questions, red flag. Don't play with them because a real dom will let you ask questions. They'll answer anything you want to know about because part of the lifestyle is trust there's trust in the lifestyle between people to allow someone to do things to you and know that you're safe you have to trust them don't you of course you do how do you establish that by getting to know them and they get to know you and that way you can give consent comfortably but if you start asking questions of a dom and he doesn't want to answer, he starts evading questions, big red flag, don't, don't go there, don't do that. A fake dom is usually ignorant of important concepts and etiquette within the community. Yes, they are. Because they, 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 they want it for the ego. They're not there to learn about it and show it the respect that it deserves. They just want to put on a title and have some woman on her knees in front of them. It's all, it's a power trip for them. Don't engage with someone who doesn't know or is willfully ignorant of the following. Soft limits, hard limits, safe words, nonverbal safe words, aftercare. I bet if I asked Natter about any of those things, he would not know what they were. He would get irritated. I know what soft limits and hard limits and all that stuff is. Soft limits. Uh, let's see. Soft limits are things that they tend to be negotiable. You know, it's a soft limit. Hard limits are things that are absolutely like it's a boundary that is non-negotiable. Hard limit means, you know, like there's no change in my mind on this. I'm no. That's what a hard limit is. Hard limit is, uh, I don't like this. This is a hard limit. This is non-negotiable. That's a hard limit. Or it's just, it's something that it's, the sub has made up their mind and that's their decision. This is a non-negotiable thing. Safe words. Safe words are words that you can use in play that if you are doing play with a dom and you want to communicate with them like how you're feeling or perhaps that something's going on, it's, it's, it's starting to get intense, you want to let them know through a safe word. Like, uh, like the whole traffic light system. If you say the word yellow, that might be a safe word of whatever's going on. I, I'm almost at my limit. You're letting the dom know you're almost at your limit and they might slow down or temporarily stop or if you say the word red 
That means whatever's going on, they want it to completely stop. If they're an honorable dom, they will stop immediately. They will like if you're if you're tied up or whatnot, they will take you down. They will, you know, do the aftercare. They'll talk to you. That's what a real dom does. But in the case if you got a if you got a really good dom, you won't really need to use your safe words because they're watching you. And they'll they'll pick up when it's time to stop, but they'll still give you the safe words. But the dom that I had, I didn't even have to need to use them. He knew. He knew when I was at about at my limit. Nonverbal safe words. Nonverbal safe words could be gestures or just, you know, like holding up a finger or something that that they're watching. If they see that sign that pertains to something, you know, like they'll respond to it. Aftercare. Hey, Natter, when is the last time you've done aftercare for a sub? When is the last time you've done that, bro? Aftercare. That's that's the aftercare after a scene is over, where the dom is holding on to the sub, talking to them, cuddling them, you know, getting their feedback or so after the situation. Because if you have an intense BDSM situ uh, scene, you know, like if, if you've been flogged or whatnot, your endorphins are just flowing. Like you're literally high. Like you're, you're in another place. You're basically almost tranced out. And so the, the dom is holding on to you, talking to you, bringing you back down in a very caring way. That's aftercare. When's the last time you've done aftercare, Natter? Jerk. But you don't know what any of those things are because you don't care about consent. If they don't believe in or respect anything mentioned above, then you are not talking to a dumb, you're talking to a predator. Full stop. That's true. You're talking to an abusive person. You're talking to a predator. You're talking to a person who's not a real dom. They're just there for their ego to get stroked. They are just there to exhibit control over other people for the sake of vanity. They're not there for you. They're not there for you as a sub. They're there for themselves. It's all about the title. You meet someone who's all about the title, run. Absolutely run. If, if that's the most important thing to them, run. Refusing to acknowledge your limits and safe words is evidence that the person doesn't respect you as an individual human being. Also true. If the person you're talking to as a dom and there's no discussion of limits, boundaries, safe words, aftercare, they're not asking questions about you to find out, do you have any health problems? Is there anything that might trigger you? Is there anything that I should avoid? If they're not asking questions about you to find out what's okay and what's not okay, run. If you encounter someone who's a dom and they want you to sign a contract immediately or they want to collar you immediately, run. Because real doms, as far as signing of a contract or collaring, those are things that normally take time. A real dom is not going to ask you to sign a contract right away. Most doms take their time getting to know their subs. And that could take weeks. That could take months. It's the fakes that are running around trying to have subs sign contracts and passing out the collars like it's nothing. In the world of BDSM, the collaring thing is taken seriously. You know, the collars, for those who don't know, are the equivalent of giving a woman a ring to sign a commitment. And if you're a real dumb, you take that seriously. You take your time with that. You don't just run around passing out collars to subs and passing out contracts. That's just ridiculous. Let's see. Oh, here's a here's a big one. Pay attention, Natter. The red flag for spotting a fake dom doesn't have their own life handled. Yeah, I agree with that. If somebody calls himself a dom, how in the world can you be a dom if your life is a mess? 
How is that possible? How can you sit there and put on airs about I'm a dom, I'm in control when your life isn't even in control? Natter's over there living off of women, grifting women, doesn't have his own place, doesn't have a car, can't drive. What does he have to his name? A couple of suitcases living in somebody else's condo. And he thinks he thinks he can call himself a dom. Boy, you don't even have your own. You don't even have your own place. You don't even have a job or your own money. You rely on women for your money, for your living. How dare you? How dare you call yourself a dom doing all that? That's insane. The people that you're picking as subs, they have more than you do. You want to paint this picture of being the alpha? Right? You're the alpha male. You're the real man. Real men don't live off women, jerk. They don't live off their means and resources. They don't hop from female to female. Because if they don't keep up the grip, they're going to be out in the street. How can you paint a picture of being an alpha when your own life is completely in disorder? You can't. It just doesn't match. It just doesn't match. Beware a person who calls themselves a dom and their life is completely messed up. They got nothing going on for themselves at all. You want to take the role of, of leader? Then you got to be a leader. You got to have your life together. You got to be someone that the sub can look up to and trust. And if you're messy, you can't do that. Uh, doesn't have their own life handle. This reveals a person's self-control and competency in life. Yes. And, and Natter has shown he can't control himself. So if you can't control yourself, how, how can you possibly exhibit control over another person? You can't. How can you be an out-of-control person and exhibit control over others? The control has to start at home. If you can't get a hold of your own life, how can you expect to handle the demands of another person's life? Yes. See, you know what? A lot of people think that the dom sub thing, it's all about just show up somewhere with some toys in a bag. You tie somebody up and do things to them. And that's what it's all about. No. No. The role of dom is, is very, very important. You know, it is you're building a relationship with the sub you're getting to know them as people you're getting to know them as individuals what they need what they want there are some people that enter the lifestyle they may have phobias or fears that they want to get over they may have uh things that trigger them they might have bad habits and i might be going to a dom to break those bad habits i have always said that if you encounter a good dom, whether it's male or female, they will always leave you better than they found you. Whatever time you spend around them, they will try to make you better people. So that if you choose to walk away, you'll walk away a better person. You won't walk away with any kind of long lasting harm. Whatever issues you have, they'll try to help you work through it. I've known a lot of people in the lifestyle that have been made better because of the lifestyle and because of spending time around a dom. I don't see evidence of Natter making anybody a better person. The people that I've seen around him, he's made worse. Being a dom is it's a serious responsibility. It's very time consuming. A lot of time gets spent of the dom getting to know the sub and building up that relationship of trust and honor and that's what i hate about the natter situation so much it's like he, he he's not about that life he's all about being selfish and about himself uh some questions to ask yourself when you're dealing with the dom does this person seem capable and competent in their own lives well i think we can all agree natter is not capable or competent in his own life 
living off of women. He's definitely not capable or comp or competent. He doesn't have any sense of self-control. There's no sense of structure there. It's all about just treating women like lily pads and hopping from woman to woman just to get his needs met. Can this person be trusted and make me feel secure? Well, that's, a, that's another no for Natter. Are we compatible in our kinks and preferences? I think Natter's a sadist. And he just likes to hurt people and he likes that whole control thing. He doesn't care what anybody else's kinks or preferences are. I mean, that's pretty evident. We all saw the, heard the audio of Dee Dee and Chantal did not want to touch each other. They did not want to be together. If Natter had been a real dom, once he realized that, he should have said, no, we're not doing this. He would have cared about how they both felt. The fact that neither want neither one of them want to do anything with each other. He didn't care. All he wanted was what he wanted. That's what fake doms do. They, they don't care about anybody else's wants and needs. They care about their own. You know, even after Chantal got sick, he was still trying to push everything in that direction. Are we capable of fulfilling each other's desired expectations? Well, Chantal kept calling him Dom and she wanted to be in a relationship with him and yet he never gave it to her. So her expectations were definitely not met. Oh, here's, here's something that's gonna feel familiar. So this person is giving an account of encountering a bad female Dom. Let, let's see how much of this applies to Natter. The first conversation I've ever had with a self-proclaimed Dom online was very unpleasant. She immediately re referred to herself as a Dom and challenged my role as a switch. Yeah, it is right off the bat calling themselves a Dom. First, she attacked my ability to Dom by being very abrasive and demeaning in conversation. See, now she had been a real Dom. You're not going to attack another dom and like challenge their position she did that because she felt threatened you know like i'm, I'm in control and then she got frustrated by my unwillingness to consent to her very rude and arbitrary demands well she a real dom she would have been very rude about it let's see a real dom has a semblance of grace competency when they're vetting someone. Yeah, like I said, they'll sit down and they'll ask questions. Lots of questions. The dom that I had, he sat and literally talked to me for weeks, weeks, long phone conversations before we even met. He found out so much stuff about me. That's how it should be done. Sitting down and taking the time and getting to know the person, letting them get to know you before anything happens physically. You know, taking the time to feel each other out. And if you're a sub, you should ask questions. As many as you want, whenever you want. And if you're dealing with somebody that they don't want to answer your questions, walk away. Walk away. Communication is key in that lifestyle. And if you don't have it with the person that you're going to give control to, yeah, that's not good at all. Uh, if a person you're talking to is quick to bring up the following, there's a good chance they're not a real dom. Quick to bring up the sex or send nudes. Yeah, like if you got, you got somebody real in front of you, that's not going to be the first thing on the table. It's not. They're going to want to talk to you first. They want to get to know you first. And then if they're after a lot of conversation and getting to know each other, that comes up, that's fine. But right away, you know, like I said, the whole BDSM thing, it's, it's about building relationships. You're getting to know a person. They get to know you. You're asking questions. You know, you're feeling each other out. The sex thing shouldn't be on the table right away. Demands that you address them by a title. Yeah, big giveaway. Big giveaway. I've been a lot of men who called themselves master, but they actually weren't. But they try to use that as something to impress me. And I wasn't impressed. 
And I called out each and every one that I met. You know what I call those people? Twitter doms. You know how many fake doms are on Twitter? Using the whole master title? There's a lot. There's a lot. And it makes me ill that all these fakes in the lifestyle are just... They're ruining it for those who are really in the lifestyle and, and have a sense of honor about it. Uh, starts issuing demands at you, disregards your preference, you feel unheard. Yeah, like if you're, if you're dealing with a dom and, and they're not listening to you, they're not paying attention to you, they, like whatever you say, I don't like this, I don't like that, and they're not hearing you, run. Uh, lacks integrity and has abusive, toxic traits. You're not a real sub. If you're a real sub, you would. Ah, there you go. This person saved that person. You're not a submissive because if you're a real submissive, you would do this, this, and this for me. That's somebody who is manipulating another person and trying to paint this picture to the sub of, oh, if you're a real sub, then you would do this. They're basically setting you up like to prove that you're a real sub. Can I just say for the sake of educating people that all subs are different, just as all doms are different, different people have different limits, different things they're comfortable with. It's not one size fits all. Okay. And what you like and what you will allow versus what you will not allow, it all varies on the person. So if somebody gets in your face and they say, oh, well, if you were a real sub, you would do this, this, and this for me. Well, you know what? You can counter back and go, well, if you were real dumb, knowing that I don't want to do this, this, and this, it wouldn't even be a question. You wouldn't even say that. If you're a real sub, you would do these things for me, even though you don't want to do them. Well, if you were real dumb, you wouldn't ask the question. This would not be an argument. Anyone who tries to guilt or shame you into doing what they want is toxic. True. True. This applies to life, not just BDSM. Someone who doesn't respect your consent, boundaries, safe words, limits is not a real dom. Also true. Someone who threatens you for not submitting to them is not a real dom. Yes. Agreed. Uh, they don't understand that these relationships are meant to be mutually fulfilling. And the blatant lack of compassion and self-awareness can mean they never will. Right. So if... You deal with somebody once and they act this way, why deal with them again? You know, they, they don't care about your limits. They don't care about you. Why deal with them again? Here is a list of abusive traits. Threatening, manipulative, guilting, disrespectful, dismissive, deceiving, irresponsible, unaccountable, unreliable, and overbearing. Hey, Natter. You fit every single one of those, bro. Every single one. Didn't leave any of them out. Those are all you. You are threatening, manipulative, guilting, disrespectful, dismissive, deceiving, irresponsible, unaccountable, unreliable, and overbearing. You checked off all the boxes, Natter. Every single one. Uh, here's another one. Here's something to pay attention to. If you're somebody out there and you're interested in that lifestyle, pay attention to your intuition, that gut feeling. If your intuition is firing off, yeah, pay attention to that gut feeling. If, if you feel, if someone that you're around makes you feel nervous or uneasy, you don't feel good about it, pay attention to that. You know, like the, your intuition is kicking in for a reason. If you're around a person and they're they're thumping their chest and saying, I'm a dom and you got to do what I say and I'm master so-and-so and you've got that uneasy feeling in your stomach, pay attention. You should feel good and secure to be around somebody, to be intimate with them in some way. And if you're not feeling good, don't follow through. Don't put yourself in a vulnerable position. Uh, answer the following questions and pay attention to what your instincts are telling you. Can you have a straightforward conversation about their time in the scene? Yeah, like I said, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I've asked questions of people. Like, what's your experience of being a dom? How many years have you been doing it? What do you like to do? How many subs have you had or do you have? Do you have any references 
you can ask for references. If we played, where would we play? What, what makes you a good dom? I mean, ask whatever you want. They should be willing to answer and they won't be offended. Because as I said, the lifestyle is about trust. You got to trust somebody to let them do things to you. How can you have trust if you don't ask questions, if you, if you don't know the person? Do they fully acknowledge your limits, preferences, triggers, aftercare needs, and expectations? Are you feeling confident they will be you that they fully listened during negotiations? Do you feel that there'll be no negative consequence for saying red if needed? Yeah, a lot of people who are especially new submissives, they are intensely afraid of angering the dominant if they say red or if they tell the dominant to stop. You should never be afraid to say stop. If you have a good dom, it would never get to that point. They would, you know, they're not going to just push you to your absolute limit. So you have to stay red. They'll be watching you and watching your responses and keeping an eye on you. But no real dom is going to get angry if you say stop. You have the right to say that and you should say that if you are at some kind of limit and you can't take anymore. You should say it. It's in your right to say, and you shouldn't feel guilty or bad if you need to say it. And if you have a dom in front of you that they're, they're going to give you hell for saying stop, that's another red flag the person's a fake. Because a real one would understand. So there's that. There's another one, Natter. Okay. Yeah, we've already gone over some of this. They're not dominant in their own life. Yeah, like I said, how how can you be dominant over another person if you're not controlling your own life? We already went over that. They are new to the BDSM lifestyle. You know what? A lot of people start off as as not knowing what they're doing. They they feel more comfortable in the dominant role, and there's nothing wrong with that. But how you get over that hump of being brand new and a novice is education. And there's plenty of ways to do that. You can read articles online. You can go to websites. There's plenty of websites to give the education. Education is key. I know doms that have been part of the lifestyle for years and they never stop learning. They never stop learning. They're always learning about new things, you know, staying on top of new information. You never stop learning. And by learning more, it opens up things of new things you want to do to make things more pleasurable you never stop learning in the lifestyle ever uh uses honorifics or pet names yeah there's different pet names in the lifestyle beware of the person that immediately they're giving you a pet name you know beware of the person that automatically gives themselves a title or makes you call them by a certain title Uh, a sub should never feel pressured to go along with a polyamorous relationship. A dom needs to prove they can take care of one sub before they can expect to take on another. True. Yeah, don't let, ever let a dom kind of persuade you or trick you to be in any kind of sexual relationship or situation that involves somebody and you really don't want to be in it. You know, like Natter tried to do with Chantal and Didi. You know, he tried to make that whole polyamorous thing happen with all three of them. Problem is, two of the three don't like each other. And they didn't want to be together. They wanted him. They don't want each other. And he took advantage of that by thinking, I've got power over both of them because they both want me. They'll just do what I want them to do. You know, he had no care whatsoever about how they felt about each other. But taking on just one sub for a dom is a, is a heavy responsibility. Especially in the beginning, when a dom and sub don't know each other, you know, you're just getting things started. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of getting to know one another. That takes a lot out of you. And it's especially true if you've got a dom that's got multiple subs. Oh, here we go. 
They need money or gifts. Hey, Natter, pay attention to this one. They need money or gifts. They usually scammers or catfish types. For example, they may really want to come visit, but need money for the plane ticket first, or they outright ask for money or expensive gifts for the sub to continue their training or prove their submission. Pay attention, Chantal. I'm not talking about ethical financial domination, which usually comes after a long history of trust. Yeah, that's a thing too. There is such a thing as financial domination. And I suspect that that was what was going on with Natter and Chantal. That because she wants to be a sub so bad and she doesn't know anything about the lifestyle, nor does she care to learn, Natter took advantage of that and was basically telling her, well, I'm the dom and I know more than you. And, and part of being a sub is you have to financially take care of me. So you have to buy things for me and pay my bills and pay my rent. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to. Not if you don't want to, but I'm sure he spun that lie at her and made her think that, oh, this is what subs do. Not all of them. Not if they don't want to. He probably teased her with the idea of, well, if you do these things for me, then, then in the future, I'll make you my sub. So she did it. But just because you're giving a guy money doesn't mean you are a true submissive, Chantal. It just means you're funding their lifestyle and, and they're scamming you out of, out of cash. Uh, just remember that it's usually the dom's role to support the sub, not the other way around. This is true. Even if the dom makes less than their sub, in these cases, they are still in the dominant role. They can allow their sub to work, to handle the bills, etc. But it is the dom who is a supporter through their approval, encouragement, assistance, and backing of, of their sub. Yeah, when, when they say here, that it's the dom who supports the sub. They don't necessarily mean all the way financially. Support meaning, you know, like giving, enc encouraging, like giving mental, emotional support. You know, like being there for them if they need to talk, that sort of thing. You know, but it, it's not the sub's job to financially take care of their dom, you know. Uh oh, here's another one. Lies, cheats, or has other bad dominant traits. Hey, hey, Natter, this applies to you. Oops, I skipped a forward. Sorry. Lying or cheating are childish traits and not signs of someone with maturity and self-control. If the dom is in a relationship already and the partner doesn't know they're seeing someone else, this is a huge red flag. It's selfish and many will justify it because they believe they're not getting their needs met. A real dom is more concerned about giving than receiving, though. True. You know, and Natter's over there working several women. Here we go. A fake dom avoids facing responsibility for their actions. And it'll be very hard for a sub to trust a dom who lies or cheats. Yeah, a real dom is honorable. How can you trust somebody or look at somebody in the leader position that they're doing dishonorable practices? They're lying and they're cheating. How can you do that? You're, you're looking up to this person for guidance, for support. You, you know, this person is becoming like a mentor or teacher, but how can they be a mentor or teacher if they're a liar and a cheater? You can't. Doesn't know how to address BDSM basics. Many fake doms will say they're experienced, but don't take the time with the sub to go over limits, safe words, contracts, or training. They may not even know what any of these terms involve. They might even make the excuse that since they are experienced, they know what they're doing and don't need to go over limits. Oh, yes, you do. I don't care if somebody's been in the lifestyle for 50 years. If a sub has a question, you should answer it. If they ask you, do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? You should answer it. It's all about trust. You got to show that you're knowledgeable for someone to trust you. Uh, this is just regarding the foundation of BDSM, that everything... Be safe, sane, and consensual. Every new relationship should at least have a discussion of the basics, and every sub has a right to speak up. True. Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't discuss the basics with your sub, how do you? How are they going to know how to act? How are they going to know what's expected of them and what to do with you if you don't go over the basics? Uh, focus is only on sex. Uh, this is probably the most common red flag. A fake dom may seem only interested in sex or focus mostly on sexual training. 
They may ask for nudes or sexual tasks right from the beginning from the sub to prove their worthiness. Yeah, doing that whole thing. If, you, if, if you're a real sub, you'll do this for me. That's bullshit. If you're a real dumb, you're not, you're not even thinking about that part. That's not, e that's not even in the conversation yet. You want to get to know that person. You're not asking for sex right off the bat. Nope. Uh, this isn't to say that it's wrong if a BDSM relationship is only sexual or if a couple is only dom sub in the bedroom. But if a submissive is constantly wanting more than just a sexual relationship, it's time to reevaluate re things. <clears throat> Other warning signs that the dom is only interested in getting their sexual needs fulfilled are if they give little or no aftercare. Now, aftercare is a big deal because many things go on in the lifestyle and scenes that, like, say, if you get flogged, you know, you get all those endorphins flowing through your body. Like, it literally will make you high. And you, it's, it's, if you have an intense scene, you, it's literally not safe to drive after you're done. But you do have all those endorphins flowing. You're not supposed to drive for a while or go anywhere for a while after it's over. You got to calm down. You kind of come back down, and and that's what aftercare is for. Is to kind of just like put you back in the right headspace and making sure that you're safe to drive or go someplace later. I mean, aftercare is for a lot of reasons, but some of them have to do with safety. Uses intimidation with the sub. This can happen even in middle of relationships, and is a sign of abuse. If a dominant keeps a sub from their family and friends or tells them they aren't a real sub if they don't do something, this is dangerous manipulation. Yep, and we've seen that with Natter. I mean, the video that was just released. Dee Dee was telling Natter, look, you're not having sex with my friend. Sorry. She doesn't want you. And there he is trying to use blackmail to make it happen anyway and telling her you won't have a friend anymore using intimidation, using blackmail, because he wants a sexual situation and he's not taking the word no. A sub should never be made fearful to use their safe words and discipline and punishments should never be given out of uncontrolled anger. Remember, if a real dom is dominant, not domineering, make sure you know and can spot the difference. True. Let's see, other red flags. Uh, there are also warning signs that someone is a fake or bad dom, such as stops communication or pulls away without giving an explanation. Yeah, real dom wouldn't do that. They would explain why they're pulling away. They won't just leave you hanging. Uses a sub as a maid so they don't have to pick up after themselves. A sub is not their parent. Always mentions that they are an experienced dom. They are probably trying to make themselves seem better than they actually are. Extremely sadistic and takes scenes too far. Send sexual pictures or other sexually unsolicited images. Yeah, like real doms don't do that. Uh, another thing a sub can do is ask for references from other subs or members in the community. If a dom refuses to give references, or it just says their past sub is a psycho. That's a red flag that they may be hiding something. Yeah, always, always trust your gut. If you feel like somebody is lying to you or they're hiding something, don't even get started with them. Oh, here we go. Fake Dom versus real Dom. Fake Dom uses fear and intimidation to gain submission. Physically or emotionally abusive. Repeatedly pushes limits or ignores safe words. Avoids communication mainly wants sex or money. A real dom gains submission with trust and respect, has self-control and cares for the sub's well-being, respects limits and safe words, communicates regularly, works hard as a dom and accepts responsibility. Now we know which category you're in, Natter. So there's that. You know, I'm, I'm showing all this stuff. I'm hoping that it doesn't make all of you nervous. But, you know, I'm sick to death of Natter using the whole, I'm a real man, I'm a dumb crap. It, it's, it's pissing me off. And you know what? 
in order to just set the record straight. You know, like you got to put the education out there. I'm sick of this jerk saying that he's a dom. He's not a dom. He's not educated, doesn't care to be. He's sadistic. He just put on the word dom as a way to grift, scam, and manipulate and hurt women. Point blank period. And it's a shame to those that are in the lifestyle and they don't act that way. You know, those that are in the lifestyle, they're real and genuine. We hate people like this. Absolutely hate them. You know, it, it, it makes the lifestyle look so horrible and it's really not. Really, really not. So going back to the whole chapter three thing. I've heard that there are other chapters coming out. That there's more than just what's out there. More than just what's out there. And I don't know how much worse it's going to get. But if I watch the videos and they are as triggering as chapter three was, I'm not going to show them here on my channel. I refuse. I'll talk about it. I will do a verbal recap like I did today, but I'm not going to show it to people. I think that's a responsible thing for me to do is just not show it. Just talk about it in a video. And that way you get the gist of what's going on. You don't have to look at it. You don't have to listen to it. And for those that have been through DV, you won't be triggered by it. I think that's just the right thing to do. So that's it. I hope that Natter, I hope there are consequences for his actions. I hope that if he did any wrong to May or anybody else, that he goes to jail on August the 3rd. And then this whole Natter era can be over. I can't wait for it to be over. It's, it's gotten it to be entirely too much. Entirely too much. It is my opinion that he really shouldn't be on YouTube. He's a dangerous individual. Very dangerous. You know, like him being on YouTube, more women are being exposed to him. There's more potential for being hurt or scammed or grifted or worse. He needs to be off YouTube. He doesn't need to be on this platform, period. And that's all there is to say. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please don't be offended if I talked about the BDSM thing. It's just that it's part of the conversation now. And there's a lot of things that people don't understand that they don't have knowledge of. And that's why I talked about it in this video, just to give education. Because it's really pissing me off that Natter, being the what he is, being who he is, he calls himself a dom. And I'm here to say loud and proud, he's not a dom. He just calls himself one. And there is a difference between calling yourself a dom and being a dom. Actually being a real one. You can't call yourself a dom if you're grifting and scamming women and you're couch surfing, living in other people's houses, taking other people's money. You're not an alpha, sir, and you never will be. I don't care what you say. So I'm out, y'all. Uh, there's other stuff with Chantal that I'd like to cover. And I'm already behind because Chantal was up late this morning. And I, I just couldn't keep up. Sorry, my eyes were closing. So thank you guys for watching. And have a good day. Bye-bye.